thank you very much everybody for for having me here today we really appreciate it uh, as jonathan has already alluded i'm uh rupert and i'd love to talk to you about the multi-award winning uh company that is pink we're a zero fee wealth management app and um before i go into too much detail about what pink is is I want you to dispel any thoughts you might have about what an investment app actually is and does. Because with our unique technology and our unique business model, we've created an entirely new category of social investing, enabling people to work, learn, and earn together. So the problem that we're trying to solve is really very simple. On the whole, retail investors are pretty much usually getting screwed. Meanwhile, professional fund managers only really perform three, maybe five years and then implode. And so when we were uh, putting together Pink, we thought that there must be a better idea. Well, that's of course where we come in. So our portfolio is controlled by tens of thousands of fund managers, our users, who all contribute to our proprietary AI. And that then seeks out the experts within inside our community on a specified time on a specified asset. And we do all of that whilst providing access to this global portfolio for free to anyone, anywhere. Now you might have heard about the wisdom of crowds and John actually alluded to it at the beginning there, but our th technology is kind of inspired by this and it builds on its bias reduction uh, techniques and proven forecasting uh, uh, methodologies. Our AI then dives into this to, to continually seek out either individuals or small groups within inside that global community that are consistently accurate. That's really important to remember. Now, we then use that data to decide who we listen to and who uh, not to, and then we rebalance our portfolio for best performance based on that data. Now, we've been running our proof of concept portfolio since February 2019, and we returned 15% by February this year. And throughout COVID, we've already done an 11% return year to date. So we're pretty stoked about how well it's going to perform for the rest of this year. Our unique business model means that we can be free for anyone, or any everyday investor that participates with inside our community. We use that data to drive and produce reports for tier one institutions, as well as managing capital for family offices, generating significant recurring scalable income. And on the note of everyday people, that's where Pink shines. We're growing at about 9.7% uh, a week at the moment. We've grown to over 33,000 users on zero marketing budget. And that's because people buy into Pink, invest better together. That is what they like. They want to work together to make one portfolio work the best for the whole world. So we're neither a place where you uh, can go and trade your money into oblivion, nor are we uh, a, a place where you could just stick your money and forget about it. We're right in the middle. We give you an alternative where you can participate without the overbearing responsibility of being correct on every trade. Now this wouldn't have been possible without the amazing team behind uh, Pink. Now you've got myself, I've been in startups for some time and I've exited out of uh, paper and ad tech in 2016. And then I've been supported by uh, Seth who's created a crowd wisdom product before and sold that in 2017. And our amazing Mark Borwick and uh, Louis Stefan who come from uh, major financial institutions. Right now we're raising about two million pounds on the convertible note, uh, and our, as John already said, we've raised a big chunk of that on our massively overfunded seeded crowd, uh, uh, crowdfunding campaign. And in August we're opening up on Crowdcube, which allows US accredited investors to invest in directly into the product. But obviously we'd be happy to talk to you. If you'd like to learn a little bit more right now, head over to deck.pink.io and have a look at our deck uh, on there. But in the meantime, I'd love to take any questions you've got. That was great. That was great, uh, Rupert. So uh, a lot of questions coming in here in the chat. Keep them coming. So uh, really quick, Rupert, and, and one of the first questions here is, is from David. Uh, you know, a, a simple sort of, it's why does this product have a 0% fee, right? I, I think I know what the answer to the question is, but do you want to talk about um, why you guys designed the business uh, with, with, with that model? All right, so it's it, yeah, super simple. We require data to outperform and uh, we get our data from people. 
So how do we give back to them? We give them a zero per fee uh, product and we use that same product for people who want to pay a fee who, who don't want to give data. And that's typically institutional or family offices or, or, or that sort of stuff. Yep, makes sense. And how, how are you guys, and this is a, a question for me and keep the questions coming in the chat. Uh, how are you guys you know, re reaching uh, these, these family offices and, and some of those organizations to, to get them onto the platform? I mean, you guys are obviously showing really good returns, but uh, like how, how are you acquiring those customers? So uh, that's actually the second part of our business model. So we start by uh, delivering data. So we, we, we give them feeds of either our AI or our raw predictions. It's all anonymized. We never give any actual uh, user data out. But we give them feeds of, about what the, what the market might be doing. So, for example, we know that uh, predictors in Sweden are very good at predicting the price of gold. So we sell that as a, as a, as a feed. What that allows us to do is to create a, a stronger bond and relationship, especially with the tier one uh, institutional banks, uh, so that they can see our performance and how good our data is and how well we're performing over time. And so once we've got that track record, which we really expect, really expecting kind of year two, year three, to be able to have a long enough track record that they were, are comfortable bidding larger checks. And those, those checks in our world look like about hundred, two hundred million dollars. Nice. And did I get this right that you guys uh, year to date this year are, are at 11% on the return? Correct. Yeah. So that's in our main thesis product. So that's the one that everybody can invest into as a retail investor, but also as an institutional. And then we've got mm -hmm. some other individual products. And I think Jonathan, I was talking to Adair a few weeks back. Um, one of our products at the beginning of this year is actually currently running at a 48% year to date return. Uh, that's based off the, the crash of COVID and we were able to forecast that and we, we got on the right side of those trades. Interesting. All right. So, um, and this was sort of uh, a follow-up to this. So Mike is asking, you know, results in down markets versus performance in up markets. So if I could re rephrase that question, I guess maybe it's like, you know, but by using your methodology, right? And, and I think we can all agree that the markets are going to be a little crazy for, for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, your unique methodology sort of uh, can, can handle that, forecast that, uh, you know, um, you know, why would you like, why, right? How, how yeah. could you guys do that? So, uh, you know, being absolutely, totally open and honest about it, we're better at predicting bigger swings than we are at smaller ones. So if the market's sure. moving sideways at a one or 2%, we tend to take an out of market position on, on, on trades. And this is, this refers to some of our individual products that we, that we sell to institutionals as opposed to our global thesis product. Uh, that's done the 11%. Um, and so, we, yeah, we, we tend to take an out of the market position until we know for certain that something's coming up that we should get into a position for. And that, and that benefits us because it means that we're trading less. It means that we're, we're, we're losing less fees, which is a, is a big problem in, in kind of trading in general. And uh, it means that we're in the right position as and when those big opportunities come up. So a, a tumultuous time like now is actually great for us. Yeah. But we've been through the quiet period as well. So the quiet period for us was 2019. So in 2019, we were only able to achieve only a 15% return. But if we hit that on a, on a quiet period, then we are super, super happy, of course. Yeah. And um, Hugh here is asking a question, kind of diving a little bit into, into the algorithms and, and the methodologies here. Like, do you guys wait different users or opinions, right. you know, as you're getting in and, and how, how do you do that? And, and sort of what's the thinking behind how you guys do that? Sure. So uh, best way to, uh, to explain this is with like a user example. So John, you would come onto the product and you would forecast the, the price of gold. And every Tuesday, your price of gold predictions are particularly accurate when the gold is in a bear market and it happens to be the summertime and uh, some other factors that we'll look at that, that correlate. So mm -hmm. when those factors all co correlate, we know that your prediction is much more accurate than other users and we're gonna weight your prediction much higher. Now that also works in the inverse. So we might find out that every Tuesday you are the worst predictor, but you're the That's worst- That's probably in the... closer to the reality. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're the, the worst in the, in the right proportion that we need. So we will yeah. invert your, your answer in that, uh, those days. So what's not good for us is people that are middle and we, we kind of discount 
all those, those, those people generally. But there, there's always a correlation where someone is better on a specific asset, in a specific time set, in a specific market condition. Makes sense. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up here with the final question for Rupert. But, uh, but once again, um, Rupert's uh, contact information is in here as well. You're going to receive a video. Reach out to Rupert. They're doing some really cool stuff. His campaign was just funded almost 400%. Got some new campaigns coming up as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I guess, I guess what I would say, Rupert, is, is you know, and I think this is a lot of, uh, this is a question that at least on the consumer side, a lot of people are going to have, right? Like, mm -hmm. The markets are getting a little crazy. Yeah. Um, over these next couple of years, you know, what do you think is going to give you guys a competitive advantage over, you know, a lot of these other fintech products, a lot of these other places that are trying to say, hey, put your money here, we're safer, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, the, what we've always been focused on, and we've been focused on this from the start, John, is that that the end of crazy valuations for fintechs and uh, that the of being able to just raise money on no product is over. You know, we have uh, the best product in the industry. We have the, uh, the knowledge and the team uh, behind it. But moreover, we have a sustainable business model whereby we're not reliant on uh, just AUM figures. Our data is driving our, the, 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 the value of part of our business. And then the other part of our, our value is our very, very sticky application where users don't only just come in and dump money, they come in and they uh, are there every single day, checking, being part of the community, being connected. And that's what's uh, driving part of our evaluation backed up with our strong business model. And so that, that's what's gonna drive us forward and being a global platform, we're easily hit unicorn status in the next five years. All right, it's great optimism. I love it. Not optimism, <laughs> plan. <laughs> there you go.